Welcome. We had a little bit of technical difficulties, but things seem to be rolling right now. So um, thank you for coming to my talk. Uh, oops, wrong way. Hi, I'm Landon. Uh, I'm a senior monkey patcher at Test Double. That is a name I came up with for myself. Uh, I'm a senior, senior software consultant at Test Double. Um, if you'd like to reach out to me, I'm on LinkedIn, Mastodon, and the Bird app. So, the reason I'm giving this talk is uh, about several months ago, maybe a year ago, maybe I've been thinking about it for a while, I was thinking about um, machine learning, AI, and Ruby, and uh, a lot of people are doing machine learning in Ruby, or sorry, machine learning in Python, uh, and I was curious, why isn't anyone doing machine learning in Ruby? Like, that's what I wanna do, that's my native language, I don't wanna to have to write Python, right? Can I get a clap for that? And I keep hearing that, yeah. I don't wanna to have to write Python every time I wanna do something in my main coding language. So I wanna use Ruby. So this talk is gonna walk through an entire project that I did, um, and I have a gift for you all at the end, but uh, I'm gonna walk through the entire project and kind of present to you how to go about doing machine learning uh, projects, because I want you to be able to do it in Ruby and not have to learn a bunch of Python. Um, so to kind of start us off, this is sort of like the agenda for the talk. So I'm gonna set up a problem, we're gonna collect a little bit of data, we're gonna do some data preparation, we're gonna train our own machine learning model. So for many of you, this is gonna be the first time doing that. And then we're gonna make some predictions. So before we get to that, I wanna talk about two things. I wanna talk about uh, tools and I wanna talk about libraries. So as developers, uh, one of our main uh, tools is uh, our code editor. But when you're doing data science work, um, the main, one of the main tools is gonna be uh, Jupyter Notebooks, which is uh, a program that lets you kind of build out your data science project uh, in a way that's like resharable and you can also execute code so it kind of runs top down. Um, so this is an example, sorry. Uh, and so traditionally, Jupyter Notebook use, it has like uh, Python in it, so you write your Python code in the notebook, and then you can execute the code uh, in, in the notebook. Uh, I'll click down so you can actually see the notebook there. Um, and so it'll be Python, but here we're gonna execute Ruby, and, and, that, and we're using a, a, a tool called iRuby to do that. So uh, here we're doing some basic addition in Ruby. Um, and then we ha I defined a method that just prints hello world, and uh, you can just do that sequentially. Uh, in Jupyter Notebook, you can also have some really cool visualization tools. So here, uh, this is the only bit of like Python code that will be in this presentation, but uh, I'm calling a uh, Python library that does some visualization stuff. There's also some visualization uh, Ruby gems as well. Um, but I just wanna show you like, hey, you can have some visualizations and you can kind of download this uh, file and like show your business stakeholders and kind of show them a whole project that you've done. So next I wanna talk a little bit about libraries. So for this machine learning project, I'm using three libraries. Uh, one's called Numo, one's called Daru, and one's called uh, Rimale. Uh, Numo is a numerical n-dimensional array class for fast data processing and easy manipulation. Uh, Daru is uh, a gem that gives you uh, a data structure called a data frame, uh, which allows you to do analysis, manipulation, and visualization in data. So uh, I'm not sure how familiar you are with Python, but uh, Numo and Daru have a synonymous like Python uh, library, I guess, uh, called pandas and numpy. So those are replacements for those. Uh, and then Rumale is a uh, gem that allows you to use different machine learning algorithms. So first we're gonna set up the problem. So I want to predict the weather, because I think that's super cool, and specifically I wanna predict the max temperature uh, for a weather data set. 
So uh, first we need to collect our data. Uh, so I went online and I found a data set from the National Centers for Environmental Information and they have a ton of weather data that you can download, you can, uh, you can use, and specifically I downloaded the weather data set for the Atlanta airport and it goes back to like 1960 something. Um, because I thought it'd be cool, like we're all, we're all in Atlanta, and so let's, let's predict uh, the max temperature for some given input. Uh, the next step is data preparation. So now that we have our data, we're gonna prepare it, and we're gonna import that data into our uh, Jupyter Notebook, and then we're gonna note the rows in the columns. We'll see that there's about 20,000 rows, and there's like 48 columns there, uh, and uh, I'm, the next line is just duplicating that data. So when you're working on a data science project, you have, you wanna pull in your data and there's gonna be a lot of changes that you're gonna make to that data. You don't wanna actually change the data that you're importing because you might have to reference that later. So say so you have 48 columns and you drop a bunch of them and you only have five columns left, you might wanna reference those other columns but you drop them so they're not there. So I'm making a duplication that I can work off of and continue working on my project. So we're actually gonna do that. I'm gonna drop, uh, let me go up for a minute. I'm gonna drop all the rows, sorry, sorry all the columns except five. Um, so uh, the data set that I got from the website uh, sh shows that there are like five core values that they define. So I'm gonna use these five core values uh, to kind of simplify my project for this example. And I'm gonna use these as the predictors to predict the, the future max temperature. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna drop all the, I'm gonna create a new data frame, I'm gonna drop all the other columns, and then this dot head method will just look at the top five um, rows in that data frame, and you can, it's, it's just basically like the CSV file column or data. Um, so it just kinda gives you like an overview of what the data looks like. Uh, and as part of this like data cleanup, uh, a lot of times, this data processing, a lot of times we're gonna have to clean up the data. So you can't just use the data that you get and just throw it into a machine learning algorithm. There's a, there's a lot more work you have to do and that work takes a lot of time. So sometimes you have to manage uh, or handle missing values. You'll have like nils. You have to decide, well, do I just wanna make the nil a zero, but that's gonna really throw off my data set, right? Or do I wanna just drop the, the nil rows, or do I wanna try to uh, do something called imputing where you can take an average of all the values for like that specific column and just like drop it in there? Um, that's a lot of nuance there, and you're gonna have to decide how you're gonna wanna handle it. Sometimes you'll have outliers that are gonna like really throw off your data set. So you might have one through 100, and then you might have a million, and then that's gonna affect how your model performs, and it's gonna over-optimize for this outlier data, data point, and you don't want that. You're gonna to have to handle that. Um, sometimes you're gonna have malformed data. You're gonna have misspellings. Sometimes you're gonna have duplicate uh, rows in your data as well, and you're gonna to have to handle that as well. So, um, so this is me. <laughs> I had to clean up some data using the Daru library. So this is actually, I'm just dropping the nil uh, rows uh, the, the code here is a little bit gnarly and I'm not very happy with it. Uh, there's different data um, frame libraries that just give you a really nice function that you can just drop those uh, nil values, but I didn't use those this time. Uh, whew, now I'm tired. Uh, data cleaning turns out to be a lot, a lot of work. So much so that there's a name for it. It's the 80-20 rule for like data scientists and and basically it says that you're gonna spend about 80% of your time, 80% of your time, cleaning up the data, doing all that data manipulation stuff that I talked about, and you're gonna spend about like 20% of your time like building models and trying different models and doing everything else. So it's very time consuming, it's very tedious, but the good thing is we're already 80% of the way there. So the last 20%, we're gonna train our model and make those predictions. So as we go about training our models, um, we're gonna have to split the data set before we were able to train. So about 80% of the data set is gonna be used for training data, and about 20% of the data set is gonna be used for testing. Um, 
So what's the difference between the training data set and the testing data set? Well, the training data, uh, the, so the training data is gonna be used to train the model. Um, and then you're gonna need a way to like val validate that it works. And you're gonna want some data points to like put into your model to kind of test it. So that's what the testing uh, data set is assigned for. Um, so what I did here is I just split the data um, into two. This looks really complicated. I basically took the first 80% of the rows and I said that's gonna be my um, training data set and I said the last 20% are just gonna be my testing data set. Uh, and since we're using linear regression, I wanna talk a little bit about that. That's like the model I chose. So there's a lot of different models that you can choose. I'm picking linear regression because I think it's a little bit more simpler to understand because I think some of us have had like maybe exposure to some algebra. Um, you might, uh, I guess I'll read this. Uh, linear regression is an attempt to model the relationship between two variables by fitting a linear equation to the observed data. So you may remember this equation. Does anybody know what this is? If you don't, your teacher yelled at you, failed you, no, I was kidding. Yeah, slope, it's the, this is the equation for a line. Um, so y equals mx plus b. Someone said slope, so the m is the slope and the, and the b is the y-intercept. So um, I prefer it written this way um, because it, it kind of pulls upon sort of our intuition as developers where we program with functions and methods and I see f of x equals mx plus b, that's just a function and I can put some x value in which, oh, our x values turn out to be all the data that we wanna use to predict some other value which is our y value. Um, so if you can imagine like all the data that we have, we're gonna put into that x and out it's gonna pop some prediction. Um, for this example, it's technically multi-linear uh, regression because we have multiple x values, not just one. And those are gonna be uh, the column, those are the five data points that we kind of separated, the um, precipitation and the snowfall and things like that. We're gonna use those to predict uh, the max temperature. So imagine, and this isn't actually what our data set looks like, but imagine our data set, if we plotted it, it looks sort of like this right, uh, it, it kind of has this like linear pattern. So if we're doing a linear regression uh, model uh, and we wanna plot a, a line, we have to plot the line somehow through this data so that it is close to all the different points. Um, and that's not really necessarily the best way to do this. Like there are other uh, machine learning uh, models that can kind of trace through all the different data points, you know, and, and have really fine-tuned predictions. So I'm gonna leave that up to all of you to kind of look at my project and tear it apart and be like, oh, I found a different model that works better than what the presenter uh, presented. So, uh, and I would love for you to message me and throw it in my face and say like, look what I did. I would love that. So this, this line, this straight line it minimi that minimizes the distance between all the data points, this is called like the best fit line. So in order to build the linear regression model, it's super, super simple. So all you have, this is basically all the code that you need uh, to train your model. So you're taking all of those X values, the precipitation, the minimum temperature, um, I think it was like the snowfall, and you're shoving them into the X value, and then the, uh, the model's uh, going to fit your data and, and produce a linear regression model, and you're gonna be able to use that to do predictions. So we have our model. We're done! Okay, now I can go home. Uh, hope you had a great RailsConf. Uh, see you next year. Uh, so that, that's basically it. Now. Where does kind of Rails come into this, building applications? You showed me this really interesting project and you did a bunch of stuff. Like, what does that mean? Like, how can I use this into my app? Well, we're gonna use it to make predictions and this is the line of code that uh, when we're gonna, we, we have our test data and we're gonna put our test data into this predict function and it's gonna, um, 
pop out that y value, remember, y um, equals mx plus b, or the way I like to write it is f of x equals mx plus b. So we shove all those x values, our predictors, into it. Those are called ind uh, independent variables. And then out pops a dependent variable, which is the prediction that we want. So theoretically, if you're writing a Rails app and you did all this, these steps, and then you have your model, you can wrap this code right here um, in, in some sort of method and call it anytime you wanted to predict something for your users on your Rails app. So I think that's really nifty. So uh, we set up our problem, we collected some data, we had some data preparation, we trained the model, and we made some predictions. So really, that's all there is to it. Um, so I just wanna thank some folks. Uh, I wanna thank Testable. Uh, Andrew Kane is someone who, uh, he, he's been working a lot on machine learning um, in the Ruby space. You should check out his blog. Um, and then I've been taking some courses from Great Learning just to kind of build out Python projects and like been trying to figure out how to adapt it towards Ruby. So I also have a present for you. I told, I told you all I have something special to kind of give away. So uh, I published the project onto GitHub um, and you can kind of look at it. So, so my goal ultimately for this talk is that people can download this, look at it, tweak it, and kind of use their own data sets that they have in their work or just fun data sets that they, they found. And, and to see that like this, this project that I have really isn't that complicated. And um, I'm hoping that you'll use your own data sets and tweak it and, and do something interesting with it. Because ultimately, uh, the only way we're gonna get more um, machine learning into Ruby and Rails is if all of you start working on projects and, and you really don't need some sort of PhD to do this stuff. I think there's like academic side and there's a place for that, but then there's a place for all of us who just wanna like tinker around and, and play with things. So uh, I hope you help me out with that. Um, and that's all I had. Uh, so test double, uh, we have a email list that you can sign up for. Um, Want you to check that out. And I'm just gonna leave a little bit of time for like Q&A and questions as I know a lot of folks uh, have time for that or are interested. So I, I see three here. Uh, I don't know who was first. <laughs> One, two, three. Is that the prediction line? Okay, yeah. So the X value is all the values that we kind of set aside. So that would have been the, let's see if I go here. That would have been these values. Um, so it's a precipitation, snowfall, snow depth, and the minimum, maximum temperature, um, which you could use the minimum, maximum temperature, but it's basically, I just reduce the number of parameters that we're using to predict, um, just to kind of simplify it. There's not as many many things there. Um, and you can see it kind of in the pro project. I think one piece I, I sort of missed was like, I was also using the maximum temperature to predict the future maximum temperature for like the next day. So I kind of took the, like, like for today, there's a max temperature for today, and then tomorrow there will be a max temperature, but I kind of like took tomorrow's max temperature from the historical data and like kind of moved it upward in the data set. You'll see that in the project. And I'm using the max temperature from the day before to predict the max temperature for the next day because those seem to be like slightly correlated. Like if it's 60 degrees today, it's either gonna be like, you know, maybe 60 or 62 the next day. Also, this isn't like a perfect science and full disclaimer, like, um, a lot of the things that I did here were to kind of present like what a project would look like. I would not use linear regression um, model for like a real like forecasting sort of thing like this. I'd use something different. Um, there's different things you can use, so. Yeah, yeah, so the, so the question is like, how do you actually like use the model? Like, you know, is there a way to like persist it? If I, if I recall correctly, like I haven't gotten to that part yet, I think there's a way to like, there's definitely a way to export the model. Um, but so if you, so in your app, 
also if you train, train the model and you're using it, um, it's gonna be the same model. You're not gonna have to retrain it. The only time you're gonna have to retrain it is, you know, you deploy the model, you get new data, you wanna optimize your model to be a little bit better and you can kind of like redeploy it. Um, but yeah, I, uh, I probably need to look more into like the exporting and actually in, in, like inputting into like the Rails app. But it shouldn't be too hard. There's like a way to export the model and things like that. So uh, a lot of that's gonna be in like the Dar Daru um, documentation and Andrew Kane site as well. I think I'm at time, but thank you. If you have any questions, you can talk to me after.